Contender Regime Boxing, checking back in with y'all, man. What's good? So we got to talk about Terrence Crawford's first showing at 154. It was a title fight versus Israel, Israel Majamal. And uh, a really good fight, man. Very good fight. The whole card was incredible. Shout out to Turkey Alashik. Turkey Alashik is the MVP of boxing right now, bro. He the MVP of boxing. If you're against Turkey Alashik, then you're not a real boxing fan. You're against the sport. Because this dude coming in with that bag, and he trying to make fights. And the, the thing is about Turkey is, yeah, he got a bag for you. But if you want this motherfucker, you're going to have to fight somebody. I ain't finna just let you get in there and just do what you want to do. You're going to have to fight somebody for this bag. Bro, if you're a boxing fan, how can you not fuck with Turkey Alashik, bro? He a real deal, bona fide boxing fan. And he's, he's just good for the sport, bro. So shout out to him. I also want to give kudos to Israel Madrimal because I made a video, a short video leading up to this fight, talking about, you know, why Terrence Crawford looked at him as the best fighter at 154. You know what I'm saying? And how he was going to be a, a formidable opponent. People talking about, oh, he only got 10 wins. He only got 10, 11 fights. Dog, y'all got to turn that film on, bro. How you going to say he only had 10, 11 fights when Lomachenko came in the game after having an illustrious amateur career, two gold medals, you feel me, whooping everybody ass in the amateurs, and then in his second fight, he get a title shot. He beat Gary, he get, he beat Gary Russell Jr. within five fights. He beat Rigo within 10 fights. You know what I'm saying? Beat uh, Nicholas Walters within 10 fights. That lets you know you different. This ain't your regular boxing prospect, bro. So y'all, y'all, I felt like it was so much disrespect on Israel Madrimal, bro, just to try to shit on Terrence Crawford because you don't like Terrence Crawford. Yeah, dude only got 10 fights, but have you did your research on him from the amateurs? Have you actually watched his film on his pro fights? The dude is a strong motherfucker and he can fight. He's smart. He was very awkward in there with Terrence Crawford. Very herky-jerky, a lot of faints. I was listening to the boxing voice, and Ness was calling him the faint god. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? A lot of faints. Uh, very unpredictable. And you could tell that what he was doing was effective, and you compare that to any other guy outside of Terrence Crawford because Terrence Crawford being so intelligent, so cerebral, so experienced, he even had Terrence Crawford guessing a little bit like, damn, what this dude about to do? You know what I'm saying? Because both of them, Terrence is, is by uh, primarily by trade a counterpuncher. And Israel Madrimov was trying to counter as well. You know, so, but Bud can be first and he can counter. Feel what I'm saying? So it was a lot of times where Terrence Crawford found himself having to be first in this fight and also not totally going away from his primary ability of counterpunching and look, trying to get those opportunities as well. So, you know, for him to be able to make a, an intelligent guy like Crawford have to think hard, you know he's a good fighter, bro. You know he's whatever he's doing is effective as fuck. And just look at his build, bro. He's strong as fuck. That was the first time I've ever... I'm so impressed with Terrence Crawford, bro, because, number one, you go up in your first fight and you fight for a title versus a guy like Madrimal. You dig what I'm saying? You know, WBA super champion. And he got the WBO interim in that fight as well. He ultimately going to be elevated as a unified champion. Uh, that's inevitable. Right? So you go up, you fight a guy like that who's strong as fuck, who's very skilled, very experienced, and very cerebral. You know what I'm saying? And Terrence Crawford was able to stand his ground and really get in the trenches with Madrimal when he needed to. This was the first time, though, where I seen Terrence Crawford where... He didn't, like, leaps and bounds look like the stronger fighter. You could tell that he was on Madrimal level, maybe even a tad bit stronger. But you could tell the physical strength of Madrimal was different. Bud wasn't able to just throw him around like he was doing everybody else at 47 and below. You feel me? You actually saw, oh, damn, 
the strength a little bit different. That, that's one of Bud's biggest attributes, his, his, his strength, his natural strength. Like, you can't fuck with a mid-range. You can't fuck with him long-range. So you, if you try to get on the inside with him and, and muscle him around, and he able to, to move you around, you really in trouble. But Madrimov was strong as fuck. So I want to give a uh, shout-out to, to Terrence Crawford because he really impressed me being able to, to when, it, when it did get muddy in the trenches, he was able to hold his own. And then he was able to get off his counters when he found opportunities. And then when he needed to be first, he was first. Now, Majumal was landing that right hand. And that was something that Bud had to kind of make adjustments for. And I felt like Bud started to get, he was he started to get hit with the right hand more toward, in the middle rounds. But the in the championship rounds, you didn't really see Bud get hit with that right hand like that. Um I thought Madrimal was competitive throughout the fight. I don't think he did enough to win. So all that controversial, oh, uh, Bud lost, or you know, it, they deserve a rematch. I mean, I wouldn't mad at, I wouldn't be mad at a rematch. And plus, he was a champion. So I mean, if Bud can't get Zoo, Jamel Charlo, the win out of uh, Earl and Sebastian Fundora, like if he can't get that shit lined up quick, then why not fight Madrimal in a rematch? That's a tough fight, but, it, it, you know, the fight was that close to where, okay, I wouldn't mind seeing a rematch. But do I think we need to see one? No, because Terrence Crawford coming off that layoff at your first fight at 154, fighting a guy like this and to perform like that, bro, I'm impressed by Terrence Crawford's performance. Um, he was sharp. He was strong. The jab from the southpaw stance was incredible. It was like a piston. It was stiff. It was it was sharp. It was powerful. Um, he was moving Madrimov off his off his square with that jab, Bud was able to, to throw. I think the difference in this fight, why Bud won most of the rounds, is because of his combination punches. You could tell Madrimov respected Terrence Crawford a lot. You could tell Bud respected, you know, the the feints, and he he respected the unpredictability of Madrimov. He didn't want to just do nothing crazy, but Bud took hella chances. You could tell Madrimov respected Bud's power, more than Bud respected Madrimal power. Bud respected his shit, but I think I don't think it was really the power he was he respected like that. I think it was the unpredictability of Madrimal because he didn't want to put himself out there and, and get caught with some dumb shit because you can't really time what this motherfucker doing. And Bud, one of his biggest attribute attributes is timing. And so for a guy to be able to be so herky jerky and awkward to kind of throw Bud timing off a little bit, that's a testament to Madrimal. You know, but I think Bud landed the better shots. He threw more combinations. I think he was, you know, more in control than Madrimov was. It this it wasn't no one sided fight, so it ain't no way you can say, well, just Bud Bud dominated every round or Madrimov had all this success. No. It was one of those fights where you got a guy like Terrence Crawford who is clearly Landing the the cleaner and better and more effective work over a more consistent period of time, and he was the one letting his hands go more with the combinations. Bud was taking risks. Bud, a real motherfucker, bro. He was in there taking risks with this unpredictable dude, bro. He was taking risks. He was jumping in there, throwing his shit, letting his combinations out. At one point, he threw two right uppercuts in a row. I think was it from the south? Was it from Orthodox? And he threw two right uppercuts or was it from it had to be southpaw because he, he was in southpaw said 98 percent of the fight but it was one i think it was late in the fight where he threw like two uppercuts in a row i think it was the 11th round that shit was beautiful it was coming off of like a four or five punch combination you know what i'm saying another thing i want to give terrence crawford credit for is that and this this is might seem simple to y'all but this shit matters this be the difference between a win and a loss sometimes when you go into the championship rounds and you feel like the fight is close, you need to show that. Your, your sense of urgency need to show. Terrence Crawford had a sense of urgency going in the 10th, 11th, and the 12th. He had a sense of urgency. He started getting, he started walking forward, pushing Madrimal back, pressing forward, throwing combinations, taking risks. You dig what I'm saying? That's how you know you really want it, bruh. That's, that speaks to intelligence, that, that speaks to ring awareness and situational awareness, understanding that this shit might be a little close, 
And it speaks to your conditioning, too, to be able to take it up a notch late in the fight like that. Terrence Crawford, he, he, he let his nuts hang, bro. He let his nuts hang, and he went out there, and he took them last couple of rounds. And I thought Terrence Crawford performed uh, in the championship rounds, and that's what was able to secure the victory for him. But, again, shout out to Israel Majumov, a really good fight. I think Majumov give everybody problems at 154. Anybody not named Terrence Crawford, he fucking around and whooped their ass. I ain't going to lie to you, bro. Majumov is the real deal at 154 because I don't think he going to respect everybody power like in timing. It's the power and the timing of Bud. I don't think he going to respect everybody's power and timing like he did Bud. Them other guys, he going to be more aggressive. He going to be herky-jerky and he going to be faint, the faint guy. He going to be doing all that too. But he going to be way more aggressive with these other dudes, bro. And he going to land and he going to hurt people. You know what I'm saying? And you see he got a chin on him. Bud hit him with some shit. Bud landed some shit on him, bro. And dude wasn't going nowhere. So you see he's strong. You know what I'm saying? Uh, man, overall, I'm impressed with both fighters. But I thought Bud did enough to win. And I'm excited to see what Terrence Crawford do next at 154. I would love to see him go get Jamel Charlo. You know what I'm saying? I've been wanting to see that fight. Uh, now that they both at 154, let's make it happen. I really like Jamel Charlo's chances in that fight. Because this ain't 168. This 154. And I feel like Jamel Charlo, you know, he land one of them them big left hooks on Terrence Crawford, and that could change everything. But the way Terrence Crawford jab looked from the southpaw stance, it's going to be hard for Mel to set shit up because Terrence Crawford's jab is so disruptive, bro. It just, it, 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 it break up your whole offense, damn near. If you ain't got that like that style of Madrimal where you could just consistently bounce for 12 rounds and all that. And you see Madrimal started to slow down later too. That's why he didn't have a sense of urgency in the 11th and the 12th. Buzz started to break his ass down. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, Tim Zoo. I think Tim Zoo, Tim Zoo would be a good fight for Bud. Uh, Sebastian Fundora. You know what I'm saying? Earl Spence on a rematch. If Earl get a belt, I don't know if that's a fight that Earl would entertain at this point in his career. You know, the way he's talking. This, this might be the last time you see me. You know what I'm saying? Saying shit like that. But there's plenty of opportunity. Virgil Ortiz. I would love to see Terrence Crawford versus Virgil Ortiz. I think that fight is bound to happen. Crawford versus Ortiz, that's that's it right there. That might be the next one. That might be the next one. Because um, Oscar De La Hoya talking greasy. <laughs> he talking greasy and shit, you know. That might be that next one. So, y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comments. How did you feel about Terrence Crawford's performance? And who do you want to see him uh, in the ring with next? Also, Madrimov. Who you want to see Madrimov in there with next? I'm telling y'all, bro, this dude can fight, bro. Y'all got to sl stop sleeping on these dudes because they ain't got a whole lot of fights. Like, take Keyshawn Davis, for example. He ain't got a whole lot of fights, but this dude, he competed in the Olympics twice. Turn, he, won, he, he medaled in the Olympics, came, turned pro, and then went back and competed again. <laughs> and then this dude got pedigree. He sparring and, and, and being around top-level competition a dude like that with only 10 11 12 fights bro he'll get in there and whoop somebody who 30 and 0 depending on who it is Keyshawn will get in there and whoop somebody who 20, 25 and 0 even though he only got 11 fights 12 fights it's because of the experience bro it's the pedigree you feel me watch that film don't just look at box rec y'all boys gotta watch that film man but y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comments man contender regime Boxing, I'll holler at y'all boys, man.